Hey guys, John here. Today's patch in SAR is called Industrial Nightmare, and this one works basically with three different knobs. So we have the cutoff, the resonance, and the noise level. So with this patch, they all come at 50%, and depending on how you mix and match these values of these knobs, you can get a lot of different textures out of this patch. So this is a quick demonstration of what that would sound like. Alright, so that's Industrial Nightmare. So the cool thing about this patch here is it kind of comes with three different things, like I was saying, the cutoff, the resonance, and the noise. Now, the cool part about the noise is it kind of gives this type of rhythmic feeling, and as you increase the cutoff, you can almost use this as a riser. So check this out. Let's dial our resonance back just a little bit here and have our cutoff again at about 50%. And then this noise is going to be maybe kind of 80, something like that. And take a listen how much we feel that, almost that rising, that intense, that something's going to be coming after that. And then boom, we can kind of drop something intense right there. So let's put this back to 50% for all of these here and kind of let's walk through the patch and see how it was created. Now you can always get the free download in the link below, but uh, let's do our walkthrough here. So from the top here, we have our level at 7.2 dB. Panning is going to be at zero. Now for this envelope here, the attack is at 0 0.001. The decay is 0.528. That one's going to be important too because this is functioning as an arpeggiator, as we can see down here in these effects of one over 16, that kind of gives us that rhythmic pulse if we hold down a note. Now we want this decay to be short enough that it gives us a good rhythmic thing and not have it too high or the uh, the arpeggiator doesn't really work well. So this decay knob or this decay slider and the arpeggiator kind of work in tandem with each other. So with that being said, the decay is 0.528 seconds and the sustain and the release are all the way down, except for the release at 0 0.020, so yeah. For the transposition, zero and zero, so we didn't change any of this here. We're not gonna be using any of the glide stuff, but we can skip over this section here. Now for the next one over here, we have, have it on poly. We have octave up here to get the extra little tonality right there and re-trigger, that's always gonna be important too. And then eight voices of unison, the detuned is at 25% and then it's max 100% spread left and right. Moving on from there for our oscillators here, the noise level is right now it's a 50, but this is gonna be one of these knobs that we can always play with or modulate or automate depending on how we want to use this patch. Now we're not gonna be doing any sync frequencies here so we can skip over this right now. Now over here for the sub saw, retrig is off, but invert is on and it's gonna be a saw because it's the square not or the square little knob thing switch here is gonna be off. So this is gonna be a sub saw in this case. The level all the way at 100%, the phase also at 100%, and the octave is at minus one, and then the detune is at zero. Now for our filter here, now we have the cutoff, and again, the cutoff and the resonance are gonna be the ones that we're gonna be using, so right now they're gonna be both at 50%, but depending on how you wanna play it, it's gonna be different. Keyboard tracking is at 96%, velocity tracking is at zero, and for our filter, it's gonna be the low pass 12 dB. Now over here for our envelope here, we can see this amount slider is at zero, and this it is on cutoff, but we're not gonna be using this envelope here, so we can skip over this section right over here. Now for the last one here for the front page of the synth here, this LFO is gonna be a little bit important here because we have the speed is at one over four, and then we have the attack zero, the release 10 seconds, and the amplitude, so how, how loud this LFO is gonna be, what it's gonna influence is at 55%. Now this is going to be affecting the panning. So take a listen how, how much this moves this patch here. And keep in mind, it's gonna be on tempo sync and it's gonna be on this triangle shape here. So this is how we have the patch originally made. Now it's kind of slightly moving between the left and right at a rhythmic feel. And we can see our meters up here, how they kind of bounce left and right. Now, if we turn this effect off, so let's remember this is at 55. Let's take, put it over to zero and see how different it sounds. 
Now, right there, it's just in the center, and it's a subtle difference, but once everything's in the mix, it kind of gives it a little bit more motion, and once we add into the noise and stuff, it really kind of makes it come alive. So let's put this back up to 55 as it was originally and take a look at some of these effects down here. So if we were going to turn off the effects that we have, so we have, we had reverb, we have delay, and then we have chorus. So just by itself, with the arpeggiator, of course, it would sound like this. So very dry, not too inspiring, and this is where the effects kind of really help make it shine. As long as we have a decent base to work with, then the effects are kind of icing on the cake here. So we'll add the chorus here. And now the chorus, this depth is going to be 50%, the rate 25, and then the mix 30. Now we want some delays here. Kind of fill up our mix a little bit here. So the left is going to be 3 over 16, and the right 3 over 16, feedback 45, the depth 25, low cut 27, because remember, we don't want too much of that low end going into this delay and feeding back and getting that, uh, that kind of that mud that just re-delays and re-delays and kind of muddies your mix. So keep that in mind. For this one, I have the high cut at 100%, and that's more so because this noise is going to be more of a rhythmic type of thing. I didn't really want to cut those noise delays. I kind of felt like it added to the rhythmic feel of it. So that's why this one is here at the top at 100%. For the mix, 36%. And then the last one here, we have a reverb. Now that just opens it up quite a bit and really fills out the mix here. You can always dial this back depending on how you fit this in your mix, but the settings here for the decay is at 50, high cut 58%, the dampening 50, and then the mix is at 68%. Now we're using an arpeggiator and it is selected on down, although if you're just doing one note, it doesn't really matter if it's down or up, but it's gonna be one over 16 and it's just gonna be on a range of one octave here. Which you could use it as an arpeggiator if you wanted to and play, play a chord. Totally up to you, but the more designed for this patch is more of a monotonic kind of thing. It's more of a, you have a monotone and you have a lot of rhythmic feel to it. So with that being said, here on the channel strip, I have a little bit of EQ, and I did cut off a lot of the low end here at about 76 hertz. I had a pretty steep curve here. You can always right-click this and then go to the order and then choose steep six to get a little bit more of a steeper filter there. And then over here at three, this, band, this third band is at 140, uh, 140 hertz. And we're kind of bringing that down over here by about 3.3 dB. And then over here is kind of just bringing up some of the highs because a lot of this, once we introduce the noise oscillator, it's going to have that rhythmic kind of feeling to it. So that's kind of the thought process behind that. Now this one at the moment is not getting sent to Valhalla, which we could if we wanted to, but I felt like this reverb was enough for, uh, for this patch. So this is kind of the concept to concept behind it and how to play it. So we have our cutoff obviously changing the frequencies. Right, kind of opening up our filter and all that. This resonance is really kind of almost getting a little bit, I don't want to say the 303 kind of sound, but kind of a little bit acidy sound to it. So as we increase this and play with the cutoff, we can get that uh, get that vibe there. So depending if we want that sound, we, that's how much we want to crank up this resonance. Now, the noise is kind of interesting because let's bring down this resonance and kind of bring up the noise, and then we're going to really feel this rhythmic type of pulsing what the noise oscillator is actually doing. So let's bring down a resonance, increase our cutoff, and then introduce this noise here, and you'll really see that rhythmic feel to it. And then our low end starts to come back a little bit more once our resonance goes down. So it almost sounds kind of like percussion or hi-hats or something. That's really the noise oscillator carrying that. So let's play that again and then turn off our noise and then see how that goes away. So that's what's so cool about this patch is you have three different knobs and depending on how you mix and match these on what parts of the song, it can really come up with a lot of different ranges. So we have that percussive type of thing. Then we have our almost acidy kind of weird sound effects with our resonance here. Or if we don't want to use the resonance at all, we can kind of just have that rhythmic kind of pulsing sound.
And like I said, depending on how you modulate that, it's very good for risers or just for making some textures, maybe an intro of your song, kind of set the stage a little bit and then kind of build up that anticipation because music is all about the tension and the release, the tension and the release. So this could be a good patch for doing something like that. So hopefully you like this patch here. It's like I said before, it is available for free download. So if you'd like to get it, just click the link below and load it in your SAR. Now, something that I've been saying in my last couple of videos to keep in mind is that you can use this menu here to load your stuff, but I, I'm not really a big fan of that. I always like the preset browser here inside the wrapper. So when I save these, I always hit this down arrow and go to save preset. And that's gonna be the same way that you're gonna load it. You're gonna hit the preset button and you're gonna go to whatever category you have and then load it from there. So that being said, once you download it, you need to install it in that same directory where this is looking for. Now, if you don't know where that is, you can always click the down arrow and select save preset as, and then it's gonna load up a directory and wherever that is, that's maybe where you want to copy that preset file you get from me. Now keep in mind, what you can also do is once it opens up that directory, you can make a folder inside that directory and put all the presets of that, uh, whatever presets you have inside that folder. So that way, once you load up the presets, you have different folders, like I have two different ones here for, for this session. So it's a lot easier to keep uh, your, keep your presets organized and not have to sift through this, through this menu and so on and so forth. But uh, yeah, I thought I'd mention that before we close this video out. So here's the last little demonstration of Industrial Nightmare and thank you for watching. All right, that was the patch. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next one.